and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Joshua, the founder of Agate Bay and this is the second part of a trilogy. In the last, uh, last week's video I talked about volcanic formed agates and today I'm talking about sedimentary formed agates. So there's three agate types. The last one are the thunderic agates and today I will show you some of the pieces that form in a sedimentary host rock. Agates can form in any kind of environment there where there's any sort of empty cavities in any sort of rock and through micro fissures under hydrothermal conditions the silica gel gets transported uh, into these empty cavities so basically any host rock um, that provides any empty space is where the silica fluid can enter and create some Agate. In most cases that's the case for volcanic host rock but uh, in this specific case it's sedimentary and sedimentary means that um, there have been some layers of sand or clay and some organic remains have been trapped inside of the sand and clay and through pressure and deposition of more sand and clay that stacked up on top of these layers it became hard and a stone and the organic material entirely dissolved or partially dissolved in some cases depending on what kind of structure was provided by the organic material and then has been replaced with agate. So all kind of sedimentary agates are the remains of some sort of fossil in what I think all cases. There's some agate locations even in Germany that produce sedimentary agates but I had a few pieces but I think I sold all of these. But here's an agate from England, from Great Britain. Beautiful example of one of these potato nodules, that's what they're called. Um, they're from Dalcoti, from Mendip Hills. And they very typically have this silicated areas in the rim, but look very milky in terms of their quartz growth and the entire agate kind of looks like it's kind of like a milkshake. Also the agate in these agates is not usually orbicular formed like in almost any other cases so I would not even be sure if you would call this an agate in the most general and typical terms. But it is highly sil silicified so that's like the, the silica gel that enters the empty cavities so I have it with me here as well. Then next up is an agate, agatized coral where you can very clearly see all of the structures of the coral here still at the outside and what I've heard is that a lot of these corals are actually dug up from the ocean floor by divers close to the shore or in, in rivers as well. I think rivers probably predominantly but some of these just have incredible chalcedony structures and this is just a piece I picked up from my physical store that I just opened uh, some time ago. And this piece is for sale in my store and it's just an old collection piece but so cool to see with these calcedon covered interior design structures. Other pieces where you can clearly see the original structure and where it has been replaced with um, agate at a later time are the Turitella agates. This one, I think there's different location where these kind of um, snails uh, have been agatized so also here the snails they have been the snails they have been trapped inside of this host rock and at a later time some of the cavities have been filled with agate so i think really cool to see in this piece i have not had a lot of these pieces before this one was found at the sweet water location in wyoming the united states i think but here you can clearly see the fossil remains so that's pretty cool another fossil remain is this uh, agatized coral as well. This is from Indonesia and here you can see every single cell that was from the coral tubes has been replaced with agate but you can still see some of the star-like pattern uh, in, in these uh, filaments. You can also see the, the entire backside has been sort of uh, washed out and eroded so it's very smooth now but also here you can see clearly all of the um, pattern of the of the original coral so that's a really cool piece in my opinion where you can still see the original formation also this incredible dinosaur bone these 
Agate or Agatized Dinosaur or Gem Bone from Utah. These are very famous pieces and also if you have good quality pieces can be incredibly expensive. This is a super fiery red agate that I cut in one of my previous YouTube videos, so make sure to check out that video. It was so much fun and such a big surprise to cut this piece as well, because from the outside it did not show that great pattern like when I cut it. So I was stuck, stunned when I, when I cut this piece. Then I have a few more pieces that do not show as much from the outside or any other fossil remains. So this here is a super rare agate from Egypt. I have heard about these before. This is from Sinai. And, um, but this is the only agate I have ever owned from this location. I just got this uh, a few months ago from a collection that I bought and it just rarely happens that pieces like this actually make it to the market because they are so rare. Another piece that I actually got from my living room showcase is this fabulous looking uh, Buhamza agate. It's the only location in Morocco that produces these agates and just incredibly colorful. But I think you cannot generalize, for example, that in general sedimentary agates would be more colorful than volcanic horse rock pieces. Like both of them can form incredibly good quality agates. So there's no, no pattern in terms of quality that's combined with the process of formation. And here also in this Moroccan agate, it has a very, very dark matrix with a lot of metal inclusions as well. You can see the they're silverly shining when you hold them in the light and see the reflection. But I would not know after what kind of organic material these agates have formed. But I assume some sort of sponge that has just been pressed by layers that stacked on top of that and just like, yeah created some, some empty, empty spaces. Another really famous example are these TP Canyon agates. This is a massive piece for the location and here you can really see the flow structures of the sediments and the, the empty cavity of the organic remains that has been embedded in this flow of the, of the sediment. So that's a really cool piece of, of that location with all that host rock attached and from the outside you can also see some of the chambers and these can change incredibly quick. So that is something I have noticed uh, from my own experience cutting sedimentary agates, that the nodules change much, much faster in, in, uh, in terms of how the colors and how the banding is uh, inside of the nodules, because a lot of these nodules, they have been um, pressed in not a round shape, but sometimes in really weird angles and shapes. So if you have a horse rock where you see some, like even th in this piece, you don't see any of the yellow uh, outside here. And if you just cut it a few millimeters or half an inch to the next, the pattern can change so quickly. So that is something I noticed cutting sedimentary agates. And also with dry head agates, which is also a sedimentary formed agate found in, uh, in Montana. You can also often see that almost the entire nodule can be uh, only with this kind of clay deposition and not even have any agate inside or often just very very little agate and only few nodules are actually entirely filled with this agate like in this case. There is also a piece I cut personally which you can watch me cut in the dry head agate cutting video. Yeah, really cool pieces for the colors. These have some of the most saturated red color in any agates that you will find worldwide and that is what made them famous. Then two more pieces that I want to show you are the Kentucky agates. These are really famous as well for sedimentary agates and a great example to show. This is one of the very rare occasions where you can actually see a Kentucky agate still entirely surrounded by its sedimentary host rock. Usually the nodules are much harder than the surrounding host rock. So if it's like a nodular type of formation in, in the sediment rock, then they will just pop out easily because the, the host rock is quite soft compared to a volcanic host rock. Volcanic host rock basalt can be very, or an andesite can be very, very strong and hard to break open, while the sedimentary clay is oft very soft compared to, um, to the volcanic host rock locations. But that's a really cool piece. And then, oh, and then the most incredible colorful sedimentary agates in my opinion. They also come from Kentucky and they're only found on a small property where you need to have the, the allowance of the owner to go there to collect, collect yourself. Um, he's a very nice guy and we dug some Kentucky agates. About a year ago when I visited him, I've been to Kentucky twice and bought some incredible pieces from various collections. And this is 
a just so stunning agate and these are also some of the most expensive agate on the American market from that country where they are found. Good quality Kentucky agates they can sell in the thousands and also this piece currently I have on my website for 1500 euros just because the color contrast is so beautiful, so strong and actually the Kentucky agates have a horrible fracturing rate. So almost all of the Kentucky agates are very, very badly fractured and having a fracture free piece with full pattern like this is incredibly rare and that's also what makes them valuable. Not only the incredible colors, but also the rarity to get really top quality specimens from that location. And then last but not least, last uh, is this um, petrified wood replacement. This was actually a large tree log that I also cut in one of my um, YouTube videos and it's from the Blue Forest location also in Wyoming where the Turritella agate also comes from in that state. And here you can see part of the wood has been partially replaced with agate in the crack where the crack opened from drying out the silica fluid entered but also all around it and you can even see some parts of the bark swimming still in that kind of yeah calcedony layer. So really really cool pieces. I really love that location where you can see both the original petrified wood with the tree rings, the growth rings, as well in the comp combination with this wonderful agate that often surrounds the tree in the most beautiful patterns. Yeah, and I hope, I hope you, you learned something today in terms of their formation, different locations of how they can be found. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the third part of the trilogy, um, which will be about thundering agates. And yeah, also check out my website if you want to see some cool pieces that you can get for your own collections and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.